Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the More Than Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Matt McLeod, and I don't know why I felt the need to start this mini-sode off that way, but here we are. Uh, so welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to mini-sode number 43 on the More Than Fitness Podcast. And uh, today's topic is one that, uh, nope, it's the wrong screen. Don't pull that up. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Super professional podcast. Um, here it is. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So today's uh, topic is supplements. Now, there's typically two pe- two types of people whenever it comes to supplements. You have, honestly, you have the, the evidence-based crowd, the very heavy science-based people um, who who basically just say supplements are worthless. They they like to uh, always give the 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 big pyramid, and supplements are always at the top, right? Like they're the 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 least important thing. So you need to make sure that you get your calories first, your adherence down, consistency, uh, macros, food quality, all of that. Get that in check first, and then worry about supplements. And honestly, they say that uh, a lot of them. I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them say that it's not even worth. Uh, spending money on or or anything like that. Um, so yeah, you have that camp that says they're basically worthless. Then you have another camp of people who think that supplements are like the holy grail of getting the physique that they want. They're willing to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on quote unquote cutting edge supplements uh, that aren't anabolic steroids, um, <laughs> which ironically often pose as to get as good as results. Wow. Can't speak as good of results as anabolic steroids. However, if it's legal, it's not even going to be close. Let me just go ahead and say that. Um, but yeah, so you have one camp that doesn't believe in them at all. And then the other camp that exaggerates their, uh, effects tremendously, right? So as with most things, the answer is going to lie more so in the middle. I think that there are some that work and those are the ones that I want to talk about today. Um, and of course, all the other shit, make sure, you know, you understand your calories, your macronutrients, all that stuff. You guys have heard it before. You guys know you should probably figure that stuff out first before you figure out supplements. But also sometimes people want to know what goddamn supplements to take. So I'm going to help you out with that. All right. <sighs> wow, we're off to a off to a great start with this podcast. Feeling a little bit interesting here lately. My moods have been, my emotions have just been kind of uh, fighting for homeostasis, honestly. And so you never know, never know what you're going to get. But today I'm feeling all right, feeling a little bit feisty. It's Friday. I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are all feeling good as well. Staying safe, not being racist. Um, and and let's talk supplements. Okay, the first one that I recommend is, and this one's almost like food, basically. It's hard to even call this one a supplement. Um, but whey protein, right? This one's pretty pretty basic, uh, and and I don't think I need to talk about the benefits of of whey protein. Obviously, it helps uh, build muscle uh, muscle growth, retention, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's also what's what people don't realize is that whey protein is actually the highest quality source. Uh, of course, if you get a, a quality. Um, uh, supplement itself because you're going to have some protein powders that are shittier than others but whey protein is going to be the highest quality source of protein as opposed to any other food basically because it has the highest amount of essential amino acids and also it has the highest amount of leucine content per gram compared to other foods that you can buy uh, like meats and things like that so how to take it Honestly, is is I would say one to two shakes per day are, are going to be ideal for for most of you. I I would like to typically for me, whenever I wake up, I'm not super hungry, so it's really easy for me to just down a ready to drink protein shake, like a muscle milk or something like that. Um, and I use the ready to drinks because I hate cleaning shaker cups, and I have a little bit of extra money that I can spend on that ready to drink muscle milk so that I will actually drink it. Because if I have to get out my shaker cup, uh, possibly one that's not clean, and then I have to clean it, and then I have to whatever, pour the milk or water in it, pour the scoop of protein in it, drink it, and then wash it again, uh, it's just too many steps. I would prefer to have the ready to drinks, drink it, 
throw it away and then be done with it. Um, so yeah, I like the muscle milk ones. Those are fine. Um, but yeah, one to two, one to two shakes per day, ideally around your workouts, uh, upon waking and before bed are also common and, and more isn't necessarily bad. It's not that like you can't have even two or three shakes a day, but you also want to make sure that you're not getting all your protein just from protein shakes. Cause then it's probably a result of you eating a shitty diet in the first place and you're not having enough whole foods you're not having other meats as well which other meats are going to have other amino acids and of course uh, other vitamins and minerals that whey protein won't have so there is benefits to eating things like red meat or turkey or chicken or eggs or something like that right they have they have other nutrients in them that whey protein shakes don't have so whey protein is number one uh, oh, and then also, I guess it, I should say casein protein powder also falls in this category. So casein before bed is probably going to be more ideal, but again, that's like, that's like the 1% of the 1% of what you need to worry about. If you're drinking casein before bed or whey protein, just, just, just drink whey. It's fine. Just keep one. Don't spend more money than you need. You'll be okay with just whey. Um, yeah. So that's number one. Number two is caffeine. Of course, this is a way of life for a lot of you and myself included. It's medicine and it's basically made by God himself, uh, which, yeah. Uh, so the benefits with, with protein or pro with protein, the benefits of caffeine. And if you watching the, the video here, I am, I am reading a little bit because I have all this written down and it's hard for me to memorize all of this in my brain. So if you see me looking down quite a bit, it's because I'm trying to give you guys the best information possible. Um, so the benefits, obviously it helps keep you awake and alert. It can have minor fat burning effects because it increases your heart rate. So therefore you are burning more calories because your heart is beating faster. Um, and habitual caffeine use is associated with a reduced risk of Alzheimer's, cirrhosis, and liver cancer. So that's pretty great. And that's a plus one for those caffeine drinkers out there or caffeine pill poppers or pre-workout drinkers. Um, how to take it. Obviously, caffeine, you're going to have to be very careful with your doses here. Uh, if you're new to caffeine supplements, start with about a 100 milligram dose. This is going to be like a strong cup of coffee. And then typically 200 milligrams of caffeine is used for fat burning supplementation, uh, while acute strength increases occur at higher doses. So 500 milligrams and above, which is quite a damn bit. Uh, even just as a, an experienced caffeine consumer, 500 milligrams is a lot in one day, especially at one time. Uh, but researchers tend to use a dosage range of four to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Um, and so, yeah, with caffeine, typically I get it from energy drinks, nootropic supplements, um, just pills themselves that you can buy at Kroger, Walmart, wherever, just a little 200 milligram pills. Uh, I don't actually drink coffee, but a lot of you will get caffeine from coffee and then Diet Coke as well. You guys know I'm a big fan of Diet Coke, but, but pop itself or soda whatever you want to call it. Uh, Diet Coke only has like, I think 46 milligrams of caffeine in it per a can. I thought I had one around, but I don't. Um, so yeah. And I think the, for, for most people, I would say 200 to 400 milligrams per day, is going to be a good range for, for how much caffeine you consume. I personally, I don't go above 400 milligrams just because I start to feel not very good. I start to feel more anxious, more jittery. Um, and I get irritable. That's a big one too. So yeah, no more than 400 milligrams for me. Um, okay. Next one is L-theanine. So this is actually one that I would pair with caffeine in equal doses. So if I would take 200 milligrams of caffeine, I would also try and take 200 milligrams of L-theanine. L-theanine is just an amino acid, uh, and it's a main active ingredient found in green tea. And it promotes relaxation without drowsiness. Uh, and it takes away the jitters from caffeine. So it gives you a more calm and like focused type of attention. And it's not going to be like a huge effect or anything like that. But I have noticed that whenever I, I pair it with caffeine, I do feel better than just taking caffeine alone. And sometimes I'll even do a little bit more of a dosage of L-theanine whenever I am using it synergistically with caffeine. So if I'm taking 200 milligrams of caffeine, I'll take like 400 milligrams of L-theanine, right? That will, uh, that usually helps take the edge off, 
basically. Uh, and so, yeah, anytime, but anytime I take caffeine, I take L-theanine with it. Okay, number four is going to be omega-3s. So this is not just fish oil. Uh, if you notice, fish oil is it, the, the little um, gels that you buy and things. Uh, that's It's fish oil and it also has the EPA and DHA omega-3 fatty acids in it. And the, the perks that I'm talking about here come from the omega-3s themselves, not necessarily fish oil. Uh, so be careful of that and keep that in mind whenever you are purchasing fish oil or omega-3s. You're looking for the total combined amount of EPA and DHA, right? So make sure you read the back of those nutrition labels and make sure you're getting what you paid for and not just a gel filled with fish oil that doesn't really do much for you. Um, so omega-3s, they reduce triglyceride levels. Um, and they also, uh, it seems to have a notably reduced effect on symptoms of depression and improve some painful inflammatory conditions. Um, so yeah, I think, I think omega-3s, they're, they're pretty solid for the most part. I think I've seen back and forth research. I think people are still trying to figure out all of the benefits and have the evidence to support that, but it's definitely not going to hurt you. And if there is possible benefits and you have extra money to spare, I think omega-3s is, uh, uh it, it could be beneficial. Nonetheless, taking 250 milligrams to six grams per day, um, so for me, I would take about a minimum of one gram of omega threes. So again, DH or, uh, sorry, DHA and EPA combined one gram, right? So again, look on the back of the, the nutrition labels and you should be able to add those up and see how much you need to take. But around one gram per day is, is good, good for me. Um, and this is, this all goes without saying, like, if you eat, omega-3 fatty acid fish, uh, so like salmon or something like that on a regular basis, you probably don't need a supplement. Uh, I think there's also eggs and things like that that have um, EPA and DHA fortified into them, or maybe, actually, I think it's the the diet that they feed the chickens and that it comes out um, with a higher content of omega-3s in them. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you want a good brand, I think, um, what's it called? Alani New with Katie Hearn and, and Hayden Schneider. They own that company. Uh, they're, they're good people. They have, um, what's it called? Testing to make ensure the the quality ingredients of their product. I think that that's, that's a good resource or a, uh, a, a good pick if you're trying to find credible omega-3s to buy. Uh, I also know Nordic Naturals is another good um uh, company that usually has really good products. They're a little bit more expensive, but again, you get what you pay for. Okay. Number five, and this is the staple of all staples, at least for me and what I recommend, recommend to my clients. And I would honestly recommend this supplement to, to almost anybody. And that's going to be creatine monohydrate. Now, uh, creatine is one of the most effective and most research supplements in the game. Uh, and so to give a quick overview of what it does, so it essentially allows your body to store and release more energy, especially in conditions of high, in, sorry, especially in conditions of immediate high power output, like lifting. Right? Uh, it's produced by your body and found in meat, so it's like, it's it's natural. It's not a steroid or anything else that you hear hear people say. People freak out for some reason. I think it's just a stigma that it's came up with. Uh, but people people hear creatine and then they think water retention and hurting your kidneys. Um, and some people even think it's a steroid or whatever. Um, it's like creatine is found in meats. It's very, uh, it's, it's pretty high in things like red meat, things like that. So, so do not worry about creatine. Um, but the benefits are going to be strength and power output, like I said. Um, and there's also some new, new research that's emerging where it has multiple cognitive benefits, such as improved working memory and reduction in mental fatigue. So there's also cognitive benefits to creatine. Um, and, and so, yeah, as far as how to take it, I would say five to 10 milligrams, or, or I'm sorry, five to 10 grams of creatine monohydrate per day. So typically that's just like one scoop. Um, uh, if they come with scoopers or if you take capsules, it's probably going to be, so I use, um, 
uh, optimum nutrition. And I take the capsules instead of using the powder. And and one serving is like 2.5 grams, which is two pills. So I just take four pills each day and that gives me my five grams per day. Uh, so you don't need to load it or anything like that. And I think that's where a lot of people get the water retention is they load the creatine like it sometimes says on the on the nutrition label on the back or on the directions of the of the supplement itself and there's just no need to do that as long as you take five milligram or five grams sorry take five grams every single day your your stores of creatine over time are are going to be saturated plenty uh so five grams per day with a meal per particularly containing carbohydrates would be ideal. Um, so yeah, five grams per day, even on off days, take it, forget about it. Um, and you're, you're good to go. And if you are retaining water or something like that, make sure you check your diet and your sleep and your stress and even your training first before you say, Oh no, it was because of creatine. It's like, no, it's because you fucking ate an entire tub of ice cream last night, not the creatine. Uh, how are we on time? Let's see. 16 minutes. Okay. We are chucking along. We have three more real quick. Okay. So number six is ashwagandha KSM 66. That's the brand of ashwagandha or the type of ashwagandha, the quality that I would recommend. Um, and so this is just an herb and adaptogen and, uh, um, it's extracted from the roots of a plant. Uh, so the main benefits are anti-anxiety and stress-reducing effects by decreasing cortisol levels. Uh, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff with ashwagandha. I think there's more research coming out on it. Uh, but personally with me as well, my libido actually increased a ton after regularly taking some, some ashwagandha. Uh, so how to take it 300 to 600 milligrams daily or every other day with meals. Um, and also make sure the type of ashwagandha that you buy is, it says KSM 66 on it for best quality. I think that's just a certain standard uh, of quality control uh, that that um, has been supported. So yeah, ashwagandha, KSM 66 helps with anxiety, helps with uh, um, uh, stress reducing effects, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, check, check that one out. Number seven is spirulina. This is such a fun word. And yeah, besides having a dope name, uh, it's a blue green algae. And so let's see. Yeah, the benefits. And as you can just tell by my pause there, I don't take spirulina all the time. Uh, but whenever I was doing the research on, on some of these supplements that I would like to promote to you guys, uh, this one actually had a lot of good evidence behind it. So just because I don't take it doesn't mean that you guys might not benefit from taking it. Um, so human evidence suggests that spirulina can improve lipid and glucose metabolism while also reducing liver fat and protecting the heart. Animal studies are very promising as well, as spirulina has been shown to be of similar potency as commonly used reference drugs when it comes to neurological disorders. Um, yeah, so lots of cool stuff there with spirulina. Uh, I also think it's fairly cheap. Um, but the dose of spirulina used in studies examining its effects, they varied. Uh, but in general, one to eight grams per day has been shown to have some effect. So spirulina, check that one out. And lastly, number eight is going to be melatonin, right? Uh, so melatonin is a neural hormone secreted by the pineal gland, uh, pine, pineal gland. That's a tough one. I know my Joe Rogan fans out there will appreciate it that because he always says that shit. Um, but yeah, it's secreted by that gland in the brain and is well known for causing and regulating sleep. When you wake up and see light, melatonin production is suppressed. This is naturally, right? The hormones naturally in your body. And whenever you wake up, you see light, the, the melatonin in your body uh, is automatically suppressed. But then when the sun goes down or the light is reduced, right? If you turned all the lights off and we're in a dark room, melatonin production ramps back up. Yeah. And so the primary use of melatonin is to normalize abnormal sleep patterns. Let's see. So yeah, the main thing it does is it decreases the amount of time it takes for you to fall asleep, not exactly stay asleep, but fall asleep. Uh, and it also has neuroprotective effects as a powerful antioxidant. And it also has several anti-cancer properties specifically for breast cancer. So that's exciting. Uh, and how to take it 
And this is the one that people screw up so much because they see the 10 milligram gummies of melatonin. They have struggle sleeping. So they're like, I'm going to fucking get the highest dose of melatonin possible. Um, so what I need you to know with melatonin is that more is not better. In fact, it can actually be counterproductive. Um, and also, so melatonin is not dose dependent, which means taking more isn't going to do you any good. Uh, because lower doses have actually been shown to be more helpful than higher doses in certain studies. So start off with 500 micrograms. So this is 0.5 milligrams. And if that doesn't work, then you slowly tear up to one milligram and then maybe three milligrams. And then the highest I would go is five milligrams per night. But personally, start off with the very lowest dose, 500 micrograms, see how you feel on that, give it a couple of days. And then if you don't feel anything, then you can bump it up to one milligram. Uh, but yeah, so I would not go above five milligrams and take it about 30 minutes before you go bed and you should be all set. And we are definitely past time. So that is it. That is my top eight supplements that I recommend to you guys. Real quick, whey protein, caffeine, L-theanine, omega-3s, creatine monohydrate, ashwagandha KSM 66, spirulina, and melatonin. As always, thank you so much, guys, for listening and for watching. See ya.